verse 2. And the Lord said unto him, What is that in thy hand? What is that in thy hand? And he said, A rod. He said, A rod. And from this sentence, the ministry of Moses took another dimension. Everyone here, listen to me, or connected to us in anywhere, whether you like it or not, one day you will meet your Red Sea. You will now discover to your amazement that that Red Sea has no respect for your prayers. Red Sea only understands the language of the rod. The language of the rod. By the time Moses got to that Red Sea, he prayed, he cried out in prayers. Lord said, Moses, why you pray? What, what's that in your hand? It's a rod. Stretch it. Stretch it. And with the stretch of that rod, the Red Sea had no option but to listen to instructions. I'm praying for somebody here. The rod that will come into your hands, that will silence your Goliath and divide your Red Sea before you depart from here today. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Everyone who did express in the Bible had a rod. A rod. This scripture mentions about rod almost 250 times. There is a mystery about rods that will help you to war a good warfare. There is a mystery about rods that will open doors of breakthroughs to you. There are so many things you cannot deal with without a rod. There are plenty of rods in the Bible. But you need to understand the significance. In Genesis chapter 30, verse 37. Genesis 30, 37. You read about a rod there. Genesis 30, 37. The only day saints seem to understand so many things that we don't know. That our generation doesn't even have a clue what they were talking about. Genesis 30 37. And Jacob took him rods of green poplar and of the hazel and chestnut tree and pie white strikes in them and made the white appear which, which was in the rods and he said the rods which he had piled before the flocks in the gutters in the watering trough when, when the flocks came to drink that they should conceive when they came to drink and the flocks conceived before the rose and brought forth cattle ring scraps, speckled and spotted. And immediately they conceived and became that color, they become the cattle of Jacob. 
This were cattle with just normal colors. And Jacob made a proposal. So let's 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 decide this. This cattle that I'm rearing for you. Once they have this tribe color, let them become mine. The others you can keep. And this man who has, who has been a cattle for a long time knew that what Jacob was saying was impossible. But Jacob understood the language of the rod that the man did not understand. So, so there is a rod of Jacob. The rod of Jacob. The rod of Jacob is the rod of promotion. The rod of Jacob is the rod of abundance. The rod of Jacob is the rod of expansion. The rod of Jacob is the rod at the largest cost. Every man with the rod of Jacob will always experience explosive growth and expansion. Every man with the rod of Jacob we multiply even in the land of restriction and austerity. Every man with the rod of Jacob will move from servant's wealth to owner's wealth. Every man with a Jacob's rod will have the ability to convert minimum to maximum. Every man with the rod of Jacob will, will not, it will not be possible for any man to suppress him or her. Any man with the rod of Jacob, the little in his hands will soon become gigantic. Every man with the rod of Jacob will thrive in the land of poverty. We had a sister many years ago. She was one of the 20 food sellers in the school. 20 food sellers in the school. She did not understand warfare. She did not understand the techniques, the strategy, the tactics of the children of darkness. It was not clear to her. They didn't explain it to her in her church that the children of darkness can divert customers. They did, they did not explain to her that they can drop witchcraft feces on market store to push away those who will, who will buy. She didn't know. She just thought she just go to church and just pray and go. But she discovered her amazement that every day she brought back a rice on souls. And so rice became compulsory food for our children at home. They couldn't because the food would be wasted. The, our children were complaining, say, Mommy, why is it that every day we're always eating rice? We're always eating rice. Is the rice you are bringing back from school? Mommy, why are you why why are you not selling? Mommy will say, no, the children just, just come here. They go to somewhere else. She did not understand until she had a message like this. And she cried to the Lord that day until she lost her voice. What was the prayer that night? It was on a Wednesday service at the headquarters. Said, my father, 
place the rod of Jacob in my hand. That was the prayer. She prayed until she lost her voice. She understood it. If you are here, you are running a business and you find that it's running dry. Customers are not coming. You got to school, no students. The few ones are disappearing. Somewhere, somewhere in the coven, a diversion may be taking place that you didn't know much about. Somewhere, somewhere in the spirit realm, invisible customers are visiting your are visiting your stall at night, and they bought your stuff in the spirit. You are just displaying it. It's not there again. The woman prayed the prayer. She lost her voice. But the next day, she appeared in school. It, it was embarrassing to her. That's what the Bible says. Sometimes, when the Lord brings back the captivity of Zion, it would be like a dream. I see somebody here. Your testimony will be like a dream. In the name of Jesus, let that tell you who are like thunder. The next day was emba- emba- embarrassingly surprised. It was as if somebody gave all the children in the school a command. Go to Mommy Rebecca. Mommy Rebecca. They now killed. Nobody on the other side. And that became a regular pattern until she has stopped selling nobody sells. I'm sensing in my spirit that there is someone here who wants to pray that prayer. The kind of prayer we prayed that night that that woman prayed that almost lost her voice. Can you shout this loud and clear? Oh God! Close the road of Jacob in my heart. In the name of Jesus. Makapora bo sope la kayaba. Ribo sope ali katende kayabo shanda. Something is happening over there. Something is happening over there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. It is done in the name of Jesus. By the next five of singers, you will have testimony about that business. About that school. About that house. Have your seat. The second Lord that we come across the scripture is the rod of Moses which we read in Exodus chapter 4 verse 2 God said Moses what was that in your hand said a rod so throw the rod down 
the rod became a serpent. Moses fled from his own rod. The Lord said, Pick it up. Go and pick it up. And those of you who know about snakes, you don't hold snakes by the tail. Go and take it up. Moses began a journey to now take up his rod that has now become a serpent. In Exodus chapter 9, verse 23, Exodus 9, 23, and Moses stretched forth his rod towards heaven. And the Lord sent thunder and hail. And the fire ran along upon the ground. And the Lord rained hail upon the land of Egypt. He stretched that rod towards heaven. In the same Exodus chapter 14, 14, verse 16, Exodus. 14:16. Let me read from 15. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. But lift thou up thy rod and stretch out and all over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the, through the midst of the sea. In Exodus 17, verse 6, Behold, I will stand before thee upon the rock in Oreb, and thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. Look at verse 5 in that place. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go on before the people and take with thee of the elders of Israel and thy rod. Where without water is the river, take it in thy hand and go. The rod of Moses became serpents that consumed serpents. You don't start talking about taking your battles to the heavens without a rod. You need, you need a rod to deal with the heavens. No man can deal with Pharaoh without a rod. You need a rod to cause your Red Sea to divide. You need a rod to bring water out of the rock. The rod of Moses is the rod of deliverance. The trouble with handling the rod of Moses is that you need to pass through the fire of circumcision. You must be spiritually circumcised. Gehazi handled the rod without circumcision. He was wasted. The leprosy located him later. Do you desire complete deliverance? Then you need the rod of Moses. I'm sure that some of the children of Israel must have yearned to get hold of that rod that Moses held before for. Although, although there was only one rod in the Old Testament tree, in Numbers chapter 17, verse 2, Numbers 17, 2, Numbers 17, 2, Speak unto the children of Israel and take of every one of them a rod 
according to the house of their fathers of all their princes according to the house of their fathers twelve rods write down every man's name upon his rod and thou shalt write Aaron's name upon the rod of Levi for one rod shall be for the head of the house of their fathers you can read the rest of that chapter at home there is a rod known as the rod of Aaron it is a rod of distinction the rod of positive preference the rod of being preferred the, the rod of being celebrated the priestly rod for in second Samuel chapter 7 second Samuel chapter 7 verse 14 Just as you have the rod in the positive, you have it in the negative as well. That's how I'm, 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 that's why I'm talking about the mystery of the rods. In Second Samuel chapter seven, verse fourteen, I will be his father. He shall be my son. If he commits iniquity. I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. There is the rod of men, the rod of man made operations, the rod of human generated operations. Punishments generated by the hands of men. It's called the rod of men. Another aspect of the rod. I'm praying for anyone here who is under the banner of the rod of men. Receive your deliverance in the name of Jesus. Receive your deliverance in the name of Jesus. Number five, the rod of divine discipline. You read Job 9 and Job 21 when you get home. The rod of divine discipline. They say when it is God's case, there is no appeal. If God is the source of your trouble, then all you need to do is to repent. If you are under the rod of divine discipline, if you run the deliverance ground, it won't help unless you repent. God sent Jonah to Nineveh. Jonah diverted the journey by himself to Tashish. And so God started trouble with Jonah. And God was ready to waste everybody in that boat, including Jonah. There was no deliverance minister or pastor that would help Jonah that day. Because his problem was with God. And so the rod of divine discipline was upon him. There are people here. They have the call of God upon their lives. They are running. Some have that call. They are still doing fashion. They are doing modeling. They are doing all kinds of other things. When there is a divine call upon their lives. The, the thing is that when your trouble will start and God is the one supervising that trouble there is no minister that can help you no matter how anointed they are 
It is God's case. No appeal. No appeal at all. For those of you who are in this garden, you have had a revelation of the rapture. And you find that you were not raptured. There's a problem. The Almighty has a controversy with you. You need to resolve your controversy with the Almighty. Some are supposed to be prophets are parrots. Some are supposed to be prophets are busy running around on the mountains. They are just gyrating from one mountain to the other. Mountain Elisha. Mountain Zilbabel. Mountain this, mountain that. You have become a mountain addict. Instead of becoming a God addict, a Bible addict, a prayer addict, instead of converting your bedroom to that mountain, you are running around like a rabbit that jump on the road and they put such light of vehicles on the face. God's case, no appeal. I had a friend many years ago who resigned from being a deliverance minister. And we said, oh, Why did you resign? Say, Sir, say many of the people that are coming to me. It's not the devil troubling them. It's God, God. And how can I conduct deliverance against God? So I, I stopped. If you're in that category, let that change. So here, you must change. Beauty is vain. In fact, in the kingdom of heaven, one of the things they give zero to is that beauty you are planting. Your shape you are planting. Everything you are planting, your air, everything is zero, nothing. Nothing. So you better wake up before, before the Almighty starts with you. That's a rod of divine discipline. I've told you this is a year of rods. Then in Psalm 2, verse 9. Psalm 2, verse 9. Psalm 2, verse 9 says, Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. The rod of iron is the next rod. That rod is the rod you will use to rule in the midst of your enemies. The rod empowers you to, to have controlling rights in the midst of opposition. The rod empowers you to exercise dominion in the presence of serpents and scorpions. This rod empowers you to dash in pieces the powers of hard enemies. I'm praying for you today that the Almighty will place the rod of iron in your hands. Thou shalt dash them in pieces, he says, with a rod of iron. Seven. In Psalm 74, verse 2. 74, verse 2. It says this. Remember thy congregation which thou hast purchased of old the rod of thine inheritance which thou hast redeemed this Mount Zion wherein thou hast dwelt. There is a rod of divine inheritance. 
that rod empowers you to possess your possession. The rod empowers you to recover your lost blessings. The rod empowers you to enter into your divine wealth. Eight. The same Psalm 125. Verse 3. Psalm 125. Verse 3. Psalm 125. Verse 3. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous lest the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity there is something called the rod of the wicked it is judgment meant for the wicked the execution of the judgment of heaven upon the wicked is called the rod of the wicked the rod of the wicked is the power that pursues the wicked to slay him I'm praying for somebody here today may the rod of the wicked pursue your pursuers in the name of Jesus let your amen be loud and clear let your amen be loud and clear let your amen be loud and clear there are other rods like that in scripture but I'm just going to take one more because of our time and then we we'll take it from there God told Moses what is that in thy hand he said a rod use that rod use that rod use that rod there is a rod of destiny the rod of destiny he said what can you do what is in your hands as you are sitting down there if we ask what is in your hand maybe a pot to cook an idea a pen a skill a talent a car key a good memory a dream a certificate something is in your hand before Moses met with God the rod was merely a rod after his encounter with God he became the rod of God in his hand not his rod anymore not just a rod anymore but God's own rod in his hand I pray that you will encounter God in the name of Jesus one thing an encounter with God does is that you locate your rod of destiny David did not need the sword of Saul to kill Goliath he used what he had in his hands he used what he knew how to use his sling and his stones no one has ever brought down a giant with a single shot of stone but David dared to be a pace setter he dared to do what no one had done before that thing that God has deposited into your life when you encounter God it becomes it becomes a rod of destiny in your hand and you can never tell how far the rod in your hand will go until you throw it down at divine command 
if you run your life on the opinion of others you will never advance beyond their limit I'm praying a strong prayer for all of you gathered here today and let your amen be supersonic may the enemy not take away the rod that you have in your hands Herein lies a great problem. What you have in your hand may be stolen or seized from you. Even from your mother's womb. That's a prayer. I want us to pray now. It's a serious prayer. And this prayer is because of what I'm going to tell you now. 1995. A man joined the mountain of fire. He was a grand occultic master. When he joined the mountain of fire, he repented, did deliverance, and he was always a happy man. Anytime he came to church, his, his clapping is normally the loudest. He danced more than everybody else. But one day he came to church. He was not singing. He was not dancing. Just sat down there shaking his head. So I said somebody should let him see me after the service. Because it was very unusual. Man, a dancing, jumping man. And I called him. So, yeah, you're so sad today. So yes, yes, that. So yes, that. So I saw something which made me depressed. And so what happened? Said so many many years ago when he was still in the occultic world, they invited himself and his friend, another occultic person, to a naming ceremony of a boy. They said when they go to that naming ceremony they could see seven stars on the head of the baby. The parents did not know that they were called sick men. So let us carry the baby. Let us carry the baby. So they, they carried it. They gave them the baby. They said they just wiped off those seven stars. And he took four. His friend took three. And they went away. He said, he now saw that boy under the bridge sleeping naked and he felt bad. And this is a boy with seven stars. They were the ones that took the stars away. Look at what the boy has become now. That, that is very sad. That what can we do now? He only smiled a little bit when I said, look for the boy and bring the boy. Can you raise up your right hand where you are? And the boiling anger you will command. My story, story, story. I recover you by fire. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, then we pray. So unto every man that is the Lord of destiny available. 
God will always bless what is in your hands and not what is in somebody else's hand. God will always start with what is in your hands before you may be advanced to do what more you seek. This is the mystery of talents that never grow. Talents that never grow in the graveyard of those who bury them. That prophet's widow was going to give her sons as slaves. But a prophet had to reveal to her that she had overlooked a little bottle of oil which was used to buy a past and, a, and secure a future. So she had something. But she didn't know what to do with the something. If Joseph the house boy turned slave could become prime minister. If Esther the orphan in a foreign land could become the first lady of the most powerful kingdom on earth. If Rahab the Old Testament allot could find a place for her name in the New Testament of ancestors of David. Ancestors of the Messiah. If that person called Mephibosheth, the crippled orphan could, could find his place in the royal table. If the shadow of a fisherman who once denied Jesus could now heal the sick. If the manger, somebody was in the manger, and somebody who used manger as the maternity word could now become the king of kings. If a little boy's lunch of five loaves of five loaves and two fishes can fit five thousands when placed in the master's hand. One, one question you need to answer this year is, what is in thy hand? Many die poor whom God, whom God has endowed with great riches. Many die poor while seeking their treasures in somebody else's rod. It's like somebody who is a boxer trying to become a footballer. May you encounter God who opens eyes. So, you are, this year, you are confronted with this question. It demands an answer. What is in thy hand? Do you know it? That rod of destiny. If you don't, you need to locate it this year and begin to use it so that you can be the person God wants you to be. What do we have to do here today? You need to surrender your life to Jesus and become his friend. If you want that rod in your hand and you want the evil rod to, to escape from you, number two, we need to locate our own rods. Number three, we need to possess our divine rods. And in this year, year of the mystery of rods, we must do it urgently. All eyes closed. Everyone under the, my voice here. If you are in this service, anywhere you are, and you are not born again, you have not just surrendered your life to Jesus. There is no way you are going to get your hands on those rods. 
So wherever you have, why all eyes are closed? Just run quickly to the altar here or any of the two altars at the back. Rise up on your feet, run quickly to this altar here. Or any of the two altars at the back. He said, Pastor, I must possess my rod. I need to surrender my life to Jesus. Rise up on your feet and run quickly to the altar here. Or any of the two altars at the back. Jesus is waiting for you here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. See what I'm going to say after me. So, Father, Baba, in the name of Jesus, I come before you now. Lord Jesus, come to my life. Take control of my life. As from this day, I said bye bye to the devil. I enter to the kingdom of life. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to pray with you now. Father, I thank you for your children. I pray, oh Lord, that you will pull them by your power. Lay your hands upon their lives. Today they are about to surrender their lives to Jesus. Let their lives no longer remain the same. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Write their names in the book of life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Abi, right there where you are. Right there where you. The counselors will discuss with you. I will tell you the next steps to take. The rest of us, where we are. Where you going to be? Let's bow our heads. Let's pray. 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 let us pray let us pray let us pray let us pray any sin that will take our lives away from us as you will to forgive you you quietly where you are now the Lord is in the same temple and make sure you are serious what you are doing 